The Raptor 3 engine launched by SpaceX this year is an incredible feat of engineering. What if I told SpaceX that they were developing an engine that surpassed their current power capabilities? It sounds absurd. How could such an engine be engineered? Let's dig deeper. In today's episode of NR Studio, Musk revealed that SpaceX is developing a methane-powered rocket engine. This marks the beginning of one of the most remarkable advances in rocket engine engineering history. It's called SpaceX's Raptor engine. This engine combines a staged combustion cycle with a full flow, optimizing efficiency and performance. It uses methane and liquid oxygen as propellants, which facilitates cleaner combustion and the possibility of in-situ fuel generation on Mars. With a thrust of 230 tons, this engine is engineered for extensive missions, most notably including SpaceX's Starship mission. The engine's superior thrust-to-weight ratio, coupled with advanced reusability and manufacturing techniques, positions it as a major advance in rocket technology. To date, there have been three approved iterations of the Raptor engine. The iteration adapted for testing and development is known as Raptor 1. The second iteration, Raptor 2, which has increased power and refinements, is currently being used in the Starship version 1 test flight. Meanwhile, Raptor 3, which is a further advancement, offers increased thrust, improved efficiency, and increased endurance. Anticipation points to its use for Starship 5-2. At this point, one might wonder about the existence of the anticipated new engine mentioned earlier. However, SpaceX has not made any official statements regarding the development of additional rocket engines. However, based on the announcements made, it is highly likely that they are developing an engine that surpasses the current capabilities of the Raptor 3. First, let's examine the vehicle that will house the Raptor engine, Starship, which is meticulously designed to facilitate human expeditions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. It has the capacity to carry large payloads and carry out basic missions to low Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond into space. The reusability of Starship stands as a pivotal attribute, facilitating expedited reflight and diminishing expenses associated with space travel. Ultimately, Starship aspires to reduce the cost of space travel and facilitate the colonization of extraterrestrial planets. In accordance with SpaceX's strategy, there will be three distinct variants of Starship. As previously noted, the most recent iteration of the Raptor engine currently under development is slated for utilization in the second version of Starship. What can be said about V3? Standing at an impressive 150 meters, Starship 53 surpasses its predecessors in height, while simultaneously boasting a cargo capacity to orbit that is twice that of earlier models. This necessitates that V3 possesses an enhanced thrust capability. Consequently, additional enhancements to the engines may be implemented for tailored requirements in Starship V3, particularly with regard to interplanetary missions. Additional evidence is found in Elon Musk's tweet, where he refers to a forthcoming iteration designated as Raptor 3. X. This new engine is poised to outperform the existing Raptor 3, approaching the thresholds of established physical laws. Will this herald a fully redesigned Raptor 4 or merely an enhanced iteration of the Raptor 3? In either scenario, my intrigue is undeniably piqued. What enhancements can we anticipate in the forthcoming version? To forecast this, we should examine the advancements SpaceX has implemented in prior iterations of the Raptor engines. The inaugural iteration, Raptor 1, incorporated a groundbreaking full-flow stage combustion cycle, enhancing its efficiency beyond that of conventional rocket engines. Previously, full-flow stage combustion was largely regarded as an experimental and specialized technology within the realm of rocket propulsion, primarily owing to its intricacies and associated costs. Through the successful testing of Raptor 1, SpaceX has showcased its capability to develop powerful and reusable rocket engines that offer significant advantages for deep space exploration. Nevertheless, Raptor 1 remains a prototype. Upon acquiring insightful knowledge from Raptor 1, SpaceX subsequently developed the Raptor 2 iteration. The most apparent distinction between Raptor 2 and Raptor 1 lies in its streamlined design. The turbo machinery, chamber, nozzle, and electronic components underwent a comprehensive redesign. Numerous flanges underwent conversion to welds, whereas several components were eliminated. The reduction of engine components contributes to an enhanced thrust-to-weight ratio of the engine. It également contributes a réhausser la résistance au feu de l'engine. 
Conversely, the removal of components necessitates an exceptionally high degree of precision within the engine during its operation. As a result of these modifications, there was a substantial augmentation in the engine's thrust. The Raptor 1 engine generates approximately 185 tons of thrust, a commendable feat considering it is comparable to the RT-25 engine utilized in NASA's Space Shuttle and Space Launch System, SALS. In the interim, Raptor 2 is capable of functioning with an impressive thrust of approximately 230 tons at sea level. In the instance of Raptor 3, Elon adeptly capitalized on the advantages inherent in its predecessor, extending them to their utmost potential. Initially, the weight of this iteration has been markedly diminished in comparison to its predecessors. In pursuit of this objective, SpaceX engineers have markedly minimized the number of components in the rocket. In an interview with Everyday Astronaut, Elon remarked, the bolts and flanges are akin to the seal of hell, particularly when subjected to high temperatures. He sought to reduce these components to the greatest extent feasible. The heat shield was additionally detached. In contrast, the engine employs regenerative cooling and advanced high temperature materials to endure the extreme conditions encountered during operation. Elon asserts that this development will result in a weight reduction exceeding 10 tons in the engine. Furthermore, the propulsion has undergone substantial enhancement. Raptor 3 is capable of functioning at a maximum force of 280 tons force. In contrast to Raptor 2, which compromised a slight reduction in specific impulse for enhanced power output, Raptor 3 concurrently attains the same fuel efficiency as Raptor 1 at 350 seconds, all the while generating formidable thrust. Examining these modifications, one can discern a consistent theme. Following each iteration, SpaceX typically enhances three primary criteria thrust augmentation, fuel efficiency optimization, and weight reduction. It is therefore a logical assumption that the forthcoming iteration of the Raptor engine will adhere to this trajectory. Referring back to Elon's earlier tweet, he alluded to the significant capabilities of this latest iteration. The Starship 5-3 initiative is poised to deliver an extraordinary thrust of up to 10,000 tons at sea level, substantially more potent than any presently functioning rocket, including the Saturn V, Falcon Heavy, and SLS. In order to achieve this goal, each new Raptor engine is expected to produce approximately 300 tons of thrust. This represents almost 50% of the thrust produced by the F-1 engine of the iconic Saturn V rocket. The inaugural stage of the Saturn V was propelled by a mere five F-1 engines. Nevertheless, it was the most formidable rocket of its era. Equipped with 33 cutting-edge Raptor engines, Starship 5-3 is poised to become the most formidable rocket ever engineered. In addition to the anticipated increase in thrust, Elon also noted that the thrust-to-mass ratio is poised to exceed 200. This indicates that the engine produces 200 units of thrust per unit of engine mass, thereby enhancing the rocket's overall power efficiency. Another aspect deserving attention is the specific impulse of the engine. Specific impulse, commonly referred to as ISP, quantifies the efficiency of a reaction mass engine such as a rocket utilizing propellant in generating thrust. Specific impulse expressed in seconds can be understood as the duration for which one kilogram of fuel can generate a thrust equivalent to one kilogram. A propulsion system featuring an elevated specific impulse utilizes the mass of the propellant more effectively. In the context of rocket propulsion, this signifies that a reduced amount of propellant is required to achieve a specific delta V, thereby enabling the vehicle connected to the engine to ascend and accelerate more efficiently. In more precise terms, an increase in specific impulse correlates with enhanced fuel efficiency of the rocket. The Raptor $3 X is expected to exhibit an increase of approximately five seconds in performance indicators compared to the Raptor 3. Although it may seem modest in the realm of rocket science, even a slight enhancement can wield a considerable influence on the overall flight performance. To attain this level of power, numerous components of the engine will undergo modifications. While the specifics of potential enhancements post Raptor 3 remain ambiguous, it appears that Raptor 3 has been reduced to its fundamental components to optimize performance. Nonetheless, one assertion I can confidently make is that in this forthcoming iteration, SpaceX will likely endeavor to eliminate as many 3D printed components from the engine as possible. The initial development of the Raptor engine saw 3D printing as an essential contributor, enabling the fabrication of intricate components that were challenging or economically unfeasible to manufacture through conventional techniques.
For example, the Raptor's complete flow, staged combustion cycle, which incorporates complex components for the management of fuel and oxidizer flow, has greatly benefited from advancements in 3D printing technologies. As SpaceX advances towards the mass production of Raptor engines for the Starship program, the company is seeking to adopt more traditional manufacturing techniques for certain components in order to enhance efficiency and decrease expenses. The objective is to enhance the production capacity of the Raptor engine as Starship endeavors to facilitate frequent high-volume launches. SpaceX aims to optimize the manufacturing process to enhance efficiency and cost-effectiveness, with a strategic shift away from 3D printing towards more scalable techniques being integral to this initiative. Through the $3 X engine, Elon aims to propel a combustion engine to its utmost physical limits. This implies that every component, from materials to combustion dynamics, must be optimized to its fullest capacity. The SpaceX Raptor engine is constructed from a diverse array of materials, encompassing SX500 alloy, copper, aluminum, and various steel alloys. These materials exhibit remarkable durability, capable of withstanding extreme conditions, with the SX500 demonstrating particularly high heat resistance. A proprietary nickel alloy, specifically engineered by SpaceX for application in the Raptor rocket engine. It is a variant of the Inconel alloy, a nickel-chromium-based superalloy commonly utilized in highly demanding environments. The SX500 exhibits exceptional resilience capable of enduring pressures reaching 12,000 pounds per square inch, equivalent to 830 bar, significantly surpassing the limitations of traditional alloys. This innovative engine will rigorously evaluate the resilience of materials under extreme conditions. To realize Elon's vision of an exceptionally high-speed vehicle requiring minimal maintenance, the development of an extraordinarily durable engine became imperative. Concerning that particular vehicle, there is one detail I have yet to disclose to you. An alternative approach to achieving the thrust required for Starship 53 may exist that does not involve developing new engines. This is achieved by increasing the number of engines. Regardless of whether SpaceX develops the Raptor 4, the existing Raptor 3 remains an impressive power plant. It outperforms competing rocket engines such as the RS-25 and RD-18 in efficiency, higher thrust, and improved reusability, making it well-suited for orbital and interplanetary missions. As a result, SpaceX has the opportunity to utilize this engine for the third iteration of Starship. Currently, the Starship upper stage is intended to incorporate six Raptor engines, consisting of three optimized for sea level and three adapted for vacuum conditions. The Super Heavy Booster, which serves as the first stage, is engineered to utilize 33 Raptor engines. However, SpaceX has the adaptability to change the number of engines as needed. Incorporating additional engines could increase thrust capabilities to accommodate heavier payloads or for missions that require higher performance standards. In July, the Federal Aviation Administration published an environmental impact report submitted by SpaceX regarding its planned 44 Starship flight launches from Launch Complex 39. SpaceX has submitted proposals for Starship launches equipped with up to 35 Raptor engines for its Super Heavy booster. Many theories have emerged regarding the distribution of the rocket's engines within the 35 engine booster. One proposal suggests incorporating two additional engines in the center position. This would imply an increase to five gimbal engines in the center compared to the previous configuration of three. However, this concept has faced resistance as critics argue that increasing the number of center engines would substantially reduce the spatial requirements for gimbal operations. Furthermore, the spacecraft achieves balance through the utilization of three center engines during landing recovery. It is conceivable that five engines may not have the capacity to sufficiently reduce throttle. A more pragmatic approach suggests that engines 34 and 35 could be arranged symmetrically around the outer ring of the engine assembly while maintaining the basic structure that SpaceX has established to date. This would increase thrust while providing the three center engines with sufficient gimbal authority. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next episode.